Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to Anime King 2. And today I'm gonna be giving you part 18 of What If Naruto was put through hell and adopted by the Raikage. Remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual. Share this to all of your friends in social media platform. And also, guys, stay in tune for the rest of the What If's coming your way, which I hope you guys enjoy. On Anime King and Anime King 3. If you're new, yes, you haven't heard that mistakenly. I indeed have three channels, Anime King, Anime King 2, Anime King 3, which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and click those red subscribe buttons and become part of the Anime King family. Turn on those bell notifications to see exactly when I post, and yeah, without further ado, what is to begin this new episode? Start the intro. So the last time we left off, Naruto faked out Orochimaru by telling him that he had the coin that his father gave him. Orochimaru, not willing to face Minato right now, decided to flee. As Naruto made his way back, to check if Uncle was okay. With that out of the way, things started to start up in the forest. It was utter chaos. As Naruto found Kabuto, as the both of them started to talk casually, until Naruto smiled. As Kabuto was assaulted violently by Minato, Kabuto didn't stand a chance. Minato would have killed him but Kabuto released an explosion right there to get away, using it as a cover as he had to run for his life. Minato was on his tail and it was terrifying running from the flash. Meanwhile, in another part of the forest, that strange girl that has been jumping up and rooted the entire time, acting like she knew him and like she was his friend, she called him her brother and she also spoke about Urchimaru. Could it be that it was Katsumi? She said that it was her mission to get him from this village. This village had put him through hell. Orochimaru was the one that changed her mind and showed her that her brother has been through too much and he need to be saved. So she was gonna do anything that she could to save her brother. As she went through the forest, as Kuro got stabbed by her, seeing that he tried to take the other teams down because she wasn't supposed to pass. But the girl has gotten stronger and faster and more powerful. Yes, she was a different person now. As something was wrong, her mind was not the same. Urchimaru had tampered with it. Neither Minato or anyone else knew. The two next time finally came to an end as Minato was proud of Naruto as he spoke to him. As Naruto spoke to him in a rather hard way that made Minato activate the seal as Naruto dropped the ground in pain. As the clone of Naruto then came back, showing that it was a clone of himself. And the clone poofed away. As the clones were able to feel the effects of the seal as well. And the real Naruto was okay. As Naruto was planning something, but he had to play the good son as Kushina was there the entire time. It was then that Shino and the others were grouped up as Naruto came to find them. They knew that he was babysitting them through the forest of death. As he did this to protect them but he could not say. As Shino put two and two together, the Okagi gave him a job to do and he could not say it out loud. So they came up with a plan of their own to make sure that they did not go to the rules of the exam. As the match started, Minato started getting infuriated. As the teams that he didn't want to pass, the members were passing through. As Naruto faced off against Shoko from Kumo, who was rather pissed off at her friend who was not talking to her. But Naruto came towards her with the intent to kill, and if he hadn't stopped she would have died. She was shocked and she cried. She couldn't believe it why was Naruto doing this to her. They were friends. Yet, as he changed so much to think that she was his enemy now, Kushina was sticking to Naruto like glue, as she would not let him go no matter what, making sure that he was okay and fussing all over him. Snaddy knew that Naruto was planning something though. She didn't know what it was but she figured it was gonna get a lot of people killed. Other than that, as they came back, as Shino faced off against Konkuro, as Konkuro poisoned Shino, something that Shino could easily avoid and Shino gave up rather quickly, something that confused Naruto, something was wrong. Shino and the others were doing something that he did not know of. So yeah guys, so basically that's what I left off you guys again. Switch across the place, check it out for yourself. So what do you say begin this new episode? Karen Ozumaki vs Sakura Haruno 
Kushina Sensei, could she be another relative near the axe? As Kushina pondered about that, probably, she said. The Uzumaki's distanced himself and scattered. When the land of Whirlpool was destroyed, said Kushina, perhaps if she stayed in Konoha for long, we could invite her over and have a talk with her. As she started trail off in her mind, right here, she kind of looked a bit like Katsumi. Perhaps she could- Kushina shook her head. No, what was she thinking? Katsumi was out there somewhere alive, and she was gonna come back home. She shouldn't be thinking about anything like this at all. As Sakura made her way down there, she wondered why was she here. She should have given up. She passed, but she had relied a lot on her teammate's strength. She should give up on being a shinobi like her parents said. No. She had felt this strength in Ruta's hand when he told her to go on. That she could do this. And she would not give up that easily. Maybe she will lose today and maybe she will lose tomorrow. But she was going to get stronger and stronger. She was going to prove herself that she was worthy of being a Kunoichi. She dropped into the academy. Tied Ruta's dance. As Karen simply smiled. As Hayate gave the word. The fight was beyond quick. As the next moment Sakura was on the ground. Sing more needles piercing her side. The girl was fast. Incredibly so. That's it? Hm. I was hoping for some entertainment, said Karen, as Sakura fell unconscious. As Karen strolled back up to her teammates, the Kunoichis of Konoha were really pathetic, like that blonde Yamanaka. She couldn't even use her family jutsu because she didn't count on the target moving. Of course the target would move. Who would just stand there and let you attack them? She was rather stupid. But still, that Kunoichi that she just fought, she could not even see the Senban needles. Her eyes were really untrained. Perhaps she should just give up on Dina Kunoichi because if she did, continue this way, she was gonna die very soon. As Samira smiled as she saw that her name was next, as she quickly made her way down there. Samira versus Sai, as Samira pulled out her ninjato, as she looked at the boy who was Naruto's teammate, she had to at least defeat him. At least she had to beat him and take on her brother and bring him to safety. As Hayate told him to begin, Samira dashed forward with her blade covered in wind chakra. As Sai quickly draw in client and send it towards her. Kazeno Yagiba, said Samira. As that was an A rank technique that Urchimaris entrusted in her, and she was making him proud every moment she fought and won. As the technique blasted in client to ink, as it slammed right into Sai, the force being incredible. As Sai slammed into the wall, a drill like wound on his chest. She had won. She was stronger. Yes, she had won and she was stronger. Nothing was going to stop her now. Winner, Samira. A snake slid her up Naruto's sleeve and went towards his ear and whispered something in it. As Naruto's eyes widened as he looked towards the girl. <laughs> he wanted to laugh. He really wanted to laugh. But he did not. Hmm, he wondered mentioning this information to Ugagi was something good to do or not. Perhaps he never heard it. As Naruto smirked to himself, things were getting good. He just needed to put it all into a battle plan. And he was going to be ready when the time comes. But this new piece of information was something rather shocking. Something that not even he expected. The next match was Hinata versus Tenten. Hinata was biting her lower lip, trying to think of a good reason why to not immediately forfeit. As she doubted herself. She was introverted, she was shy, she was weak. She could not get close to Tenten without winning, and Tenten, a long range fighter, would not give her the opportunity of getting close. Hayate gave a start as Tenten jumped backwards. Hinata moved forward. She had to close the distance between them. A pity Tenten already thought about that. Hinata's eyes went wide as she jumped back. The ground exploded from the explosive pad that Tenten dropped the moment she jumped. Volleys of shurikens came flying forward, and sickles whipping through the air. Even though her Byakuan was activated, Hinata could not dodge all of them because she was afraid. She was afraid of getting impaled with all of them as they sliced her. She was able to dodge the rest of them, but she gave up the next second. As Tang then looked towards the girl, she just needs some courage. But at the moment she had none to help her and she thought of herself as a failure. Going this way, there was no way she was going to make it as a Kunoichi as Tang then made her way up after she was declared the winner. As Hinata was taken to the infirmary, as Nietzsche looked towards Hinata, she be carried away like she was pathetic. Even though the words of the boy that spoke to him about fate echo in his ears. The next match was Yori versus Yagra. Sucks to be you, said Yori as he jumped down. His two teammates had won, so 
He had to win this. So it was rather easy for him to just suck. The boy is Joker. He just need to hold him. I don't think that is how you should greet your adversary. It is not very youthful, said Yagra, as he took a fighting stance. Yosh, Yagrakan, let the fire of you burn brightly today. The yell came from Guy, who had realized that moping outside of Snadi's door and pissing her off by crying for leave was not going to help. Of course, Guy knew Yagra. The boy had come to him for pointers here and there. Yosh, said Yagra, as his eyes started to sparkle with a flame of youth. Begin, said Hayate. Yagura dropped his weights and he shot forward with his speed immensely. Yori tried to catch Yagura, but Yagura's speed was just something different. The moment Yagura caught up behind Yori, he was done for. I am not as kind as Lee Khan, said Yagura. When I hit, I break. As Yori spat blood violently as his bones were snapped. Yagra punches were intense as Yori collapsed to the ground unconscious as Hayate declared Yagra the winner. The next match was Choji versus Kiba. Choji was munching on some chips as he stared at Kiba. Please don't Kiba said. I forfeit the match Choji said as Kiba growled. I wanted to eat something. Damn it. It's been five days since I last ate something. Damn it Choji said Kiba. As Minato reached up and scratched the back of his head. Well, we do have some genies like that. The Raikagi narrowed his eyes as he glued towards Naruto. Was there fleas in Konoha or something? Recently, Naruto has been scratching the back of his head. And so was Minato. Something was off. The next match was Sasuke vs Shikamaru. As Shikamaru stood there, Sasuke was falling onto his neck, strangely. It was a drag because he didn't want to fight. He really didn't want to fight. But he saw the possibility that he could actually win this. Begin, Hayate said. Sasuke threw two kunais as he dashed forward. Maybe he was faking being weakened, as his speed was not that, well, pathetic. For someone who looked that beaten up. In any case, Shikamaru got on his knees as he flashed through his hand signs. As his shadow moved forward, it seems like Sasuke was really not in any condition to fight because he wasn't able to dodge as his shadow got caught. As the both of them were now stuck in one position, Sasuke unable to move. Shikamaru pulled out some weapon, Kuhn has some in his pouch, as Sasuke mimicked the movement but he did not pull out anything. Sasuke was pissed off. Was he really gonna lose here? Against Shikamaru Nara, the laziest ninja of Konoha. That shouldn't have been possible. He wanted power. He needed power. He couldn't be defeated right there right then. Sasuke's stress level increased. As the world seemed to slow down for a moment that Shikamaru started to aim the kunai. As Sasuke eyes turned red, Sasuke wanted to cry out in agonizing pain because the seal on his neck started to react violently to him activating Sharingan but he did not. As he tried to cast a Genjutsu, the shadow technique dropped and Shikamaru was able to break through the Genjutsu but it was too late as Sasuke slammed a fist right into his jaw. He was picked up off his feet and thrown. Shikamaru lied there unmoving. As Hayate waited 10 seconds until he declared Sasuke the winner. As Shikamaru then got up as he walked towards Naruto, who narrowed his eyes towards Shikamaru curiously. Shikamaru pat him on the shoulder. He's got the Sharingan now, said Shikamaru as he went to the infirmary. He wanted to see how Ino was and have his jaw looked at. Afterwards, the remaining 9 winners stood in front of the Hokage in the office, who had a forced smile. He only wanted Kanoha ninjas participating in last tournament but other ninjas were in there as well but still he put on that smile well i am sure that you're going to make your villages proud in the upcoming month when the tournament begins the kumo ninjas considering the distance between our villages are gladly invited to remain for the month and such kindness extend towards the sound ninjas it doesn't matter if you remain or not it is up to you said minato as he gave a gentle smile as naruto was looking at samira he had to give props to the hidden sound. They truly know how to change someone's face. Yoru was able to recognize the scent, the heartbeat, the vibrations, plus the style and shadow clone jutsu. Naruto wouldn't have believed it, but it had turned out to be the truth. Perhaps she was swept away by the current and lost her memory, and someone took her away in the hidden sound. Then she underwent such changes for a reason, being forced or not. 
probably by the Sound Kage. Hmm. So much for Konoha Anbu, Special Division. If Snakes had done a bigger job than all of them put together. When he got back to Kumo, he was an institute, the Snake Name, Secret Department for Information Gathering and Retrieval. He had to find some kind of catchy name though, to describe it better, like his. Heroic, intelligent, service Snakes. Well, you will think about that later on, right now. He had other things to deal with. Firstly, why did Urchmar go after a soccer team? And he saw Sasuke was holding on to his next stranger. He had the idea there. You may answer me later, you're all dismissed. Said Minato snapping Naruto from his thoughts. Except for you, Naruto. As Naruto waited until all of them left. Before he got in a kneeling position. Hokage sama he said. As Minato activated the privacy seals, I've been thinking for a while about something. To fix the rash, civilian attitude that defy my will, and also about Donzo. Him, funding Root, that is not under my control. As Nurta I the Hokage, I understand. What do you wish of me? You will begin training for this month in Root, and also spend later time with your mother, just to give you a taste of what awaits you. And I want your summoning scrolls on the grasp. That, that's impossible, Hokage sama said Naruto. And why would that be? asked Minato. I did more than hiding it. I made it un graspable, even by my hands. Oh? And where did you put it, Naruto? asked Minato. Inside the Kayubi seal, Hokage sama said Naruto. Minato was shot by the boy words. Somewhere deep in the mindscape of Naruto, as a fox stared at the seal that was in there, the summoning contract scroll. It was like a snake, but it had no head and no ending, it was just there, chains around it. But you told Snaddy and Jaria, so you lied. No, they can see it, but they cannot touch it or take it without freeing the Kayube, said Naruto. Well, does that mean that you can free the Kayube if you remove it at a moment notice, said Minato. I said this out of my grasp, Hokage sama and even if I could, I am not suicidal. A dead weapon cannot serve a master. Minato eyes narrowed even more. This boy. Either he was a born actor, or he was just indebted, or he was another Urchimaru. There were so many. But Minato had to find out how the Naruto seal the summoning scroll within himself. As it snapped into his mind rather quickly. Kushina was a seal master. And if Naruto asked her for anything, she would give it to him. Especially when he gave her those puppy dog eyes. In her state, she would give him anything that he wanted. It made sense now. Root training will make you better. You are to become Kanoha perfect weapon after all. As Naruto said nothing as Minato continued. Anyway, you have done wonderful progress in Kushinaheim. And I am pleased. So pleased in fact I decided to let you keep on doing your medical main training with Rain San. And at the same time, your root training while taking care of Kushina. Thank you, Hokage sama said Naruto. But for today, you're free to go around the city. And in the force of death, which I'm sure you will be, said Minato. You're dismissed. As the man deactivated the privacy seal, as Naruto flashed away and made his way towards Namikaze Mansion, where he saw Kushner folding his clothes and putting them in the drawers. She even seemed like a calm, gentle, hearing mother humming a happy tune until she saw something. The snake earring on his decks. The same one that pink hair bitch had touched on her ear when she was fighting that other Uzumaki. It meant only one thing her son had a secret girlfriend and he was not telling anyone about it. She could not let this stand as Naruto jumped down from the window and landed as he rang the doorbell three times. A sign that it was him. As Naruto heard the footsteps she was coming fast. As she opened the door, the seal on her arm was bright red. As her eyes looked bloodshot. She couldn't believe it. Her Naruto-chan, hers, was having a secret affair with someone, and he did not tell anyone. Mom, I am home, he whispered. Kushina stepped backwards, no. He wouldn't do that to her, he must have an explanation. Naruto-chan, she said, welcome home. As she let him in, she closed the door behind him, as she coughed a bit. Yes, mom, said Naruto. I saw that you have a green earring on your decks. Do you want to have your ear pierced? She asked, as she materialized that thing. Chucker chain that could pierce his ears, she could do that. Perhaps he was trying to pierce his ears, and it was not a present for that nature whore. No. Dad asked me to find a way to help the other Konoha ninjas. And 
Kuno is my home, so I decided to give them. Those as trackers and pheromones, so the snakes in the forest would not harm them. So with that, they had an easier time in the forest of death. Kushina change vanish away. I gave one per team and made them in an eerie form. The last one is for you, mom. Kill me, kill me, kill me, said the Kyube. And the Kyube hated Naruto acting. It was just stifling to watch. Shut the hell up, said Naruto. I am the one that has to go through this and even talk like this to pretend that I care about this woman. As Kushina brought her hand in front of her mouth, how stupid she had been. Her Naruto chan wanted to give her a present, and here she thought he was doing something improper. How stupid she had been. She giggled at the compliment and she decided to try to sneak earring. Why not? It was easy to attach. How do I look, Naruto chan? She asked. He wanted to roll his eyes, but he could not. It suits you, mom, said Naruto. You look beautiful. As she smiled. I'm going to train the forest later on. Can I? He asked. As she nodded. But come back before sunset, got it? He nodded as he stepped forward and hugged her. As he roughly his ear and hugged him back. Her Naruto chan was really a nice, kind, gentle young boy. As she knew that he would come to love Kanoha, she needed to find some friend his own age for him though. Going to train the forest alone certainly did not leave him much time to make friends. As he went up to his room and got a backpack. I'm off mom, he said. See you later, Naruto chan, she said. The moment he exited his face, turn empty. That smile, that faintness just vanished. As he dashed off towards the forest of death, as Naruto knew that he was being watched, Yamato was watching him. He created a hundred clones as he slipped away. Meanwhile, with Koru, so, now that you have tried your skills, do you understand the stupidity of doing that Taijutsu move? You expose your soft belly to the enemy counter, and that lead towards your stupidity, Kuro hiss. As he looked down towards his firstborn, Yoru, who was lying down on his back, his stomach already bandaged. I thought no Jenny would be able to counter that fast. How could I know they were throwing materials at Yoru? Maybe after they defeated the Sand Ninja so easily, you could have waited for information. You got lucky that Skeletan was there for support, as Kuro turned towards the Andakanda, who hissed towards him. Yes, he'll be fine, said Kuro, as Skele nodded. Now, for our guests from the sound, as Kuro turned as a large amount of snakes rose up, still not talking. Uncle Sen taught us a great deal, and they're still not ready to talk. Well, another set of hisses came from down below, as Kuro lowered his head. The boss is coming around, he will take care of that, and then we'll have information on the sound. Those sound ninjas are hiding something, Pops. I'm sure if it's a Yoru, we'll find out. How are the tales going right now? Asked Kuro as he turned towards his son. Coming along well. I see we have to hand it down to Epsilon. He know how to get stuff down easily. Yeah, I'm starting to think that he's a complete different person than boss. But he's a shadow clone. I wonder how the information transfer. It's gonna happen after all it's been a month since Epsilon has been around. I'm afraid doing this stuff repeatedly. It's gonna harm his brain. All I get are headaches Kuro and you know it's Enruto. As he entered the cave as he was holding the Ichi Ichi series in his hand. What this about a sound team I need to torture though. Jumpy chan capture the team that was trying to harass a large quantity of us. They use these strange vibrations, sound waves. Epsilon took care of disarming them. He was quite thorough with it and were keeping guards on them. They did say something funny though when they saw us, said Yoru, which is why we're keeping them here, said Koru. They asked if Urchamar Sam was punishing them for their failures. As Naruto placed away his book, he was at a very drastic scene in the book, but there was more important things to do. Here I thought I could get some sleep. Well, I guess they're a liability. I have to work on them with Epsilon. Another Naruto came out as he was dressed in a white lab coat. As he came walking over to his boss, the new eggs have hatched. We got something you'd like to see, boss. Ah, new youngling, said Kuro. As there were small snakes moving around, looking for the straps of meat they could find in the cave. And my father bring go much whenever he see young lengths, said Yoru as he rolled his eyes. What is it, Omega? said Naruto. As the clone told him to follow, Truly, every month this person's clone was a headache, but one he was willing to go through. He was sure somehow in the future he was going to get a split, personality or something, but he had to do everything now. It was all for getting back to Kumo. We got two special ones in this batch, a two-headed snake and well, you see, said Omega. As Naruto saw a two-headed snake, chewing two mouths with each of the heads. As Naruto saw the other one, who looked like his first snake, Sharu, it was white with red eyes. He looked, yeah, when I saw him, I nearly cried to the Omega. I'm sure that we can have Twinkon, as Omega looked over the twin-headed snake, become bigger, and Sharachan, 
It's a girl, said Naruto, as he scratched White Snake's head. Yep, it's a girl. As the snake simply hissed at him, seemed to enjoy it. Well then, said Naruto, I guess I'll go question our guests. Something that Uncle would be proud to see, but he would never for the life of him show it to her. He knew what he was doing was wrong, incredibly so, but someone needed to do it. I thought I told you, said the Kayube, there's no right or wrong in this world. There are those who win, and there are those who die. Which one do you prefer to be? Living or dead? I still don't like torturing people, said Naruto. The Kayube simply frowned and growled. Oh, you don't like torture people? Then what about me? Free me. Being in here is torture for me, so free me right now. Well, when doing so won't kill me, I will. I already promised you that, said Naruto. Yeah, yeah, we're deal. Say that when you remove the seal. I already know where you stand and what you want, said Naruto. I know you. But you probably don't know, but you're probably the only reason why I'm still sane right here. So, I'll let you go. I made a deal. And I am going to make that deal a reality once I find a way. Yeah, yeah. Guess I'll just have to wait for now, said Kayube. As Naruto went towards the room, the prisoners were stripped. As one of them had horrible wounds over his body. It looked like fire had burned him. The other one had metallic tubes in his arm. The third was a woman. The three of them were tied, gagged, and blindfolded. He sighed. He hated his life of work. Time skip. With the Hokage. Hokage-sama, all teams were found. Out of 27 teams, 9 reached the tower. We have deaths along the sand team. Done by poison, slashing, chakra exhaustion. A Konoha Genin squad. Done by crushing earth jutsus and a mixing squad from the hidden zone. The rest has been found in a neat pile in the forest with a note left behind. The young fool avoided to report that he was big, yellow and orange with a mocking, saying that they were all losers. They all seem to be dehydrated. We are now in the process of taking care of them in the hospitals. They said that the snakes in the forest attacked them with sheer ferocity and also cunningness. Minota nodded as he dismissed the man. As he turned his gaze towards Konoha, he is strong, all right, said Minato. As Naruto was able to subdue all the other teams, Danzo then entered the office. As the man walked inside, as he had a boy, the same height as Naruto, blonde hair wearing an onto a wolf mask. As the mask was removed, the face with whisker marks, blue eyes, same height and same size. I had this operative prepared. We can begin the procedure. She won't know the difference. We will have the Kayube back, said Danzo. Minato nodded. I will protect Konoha and the people, and my wife. Everyone wins, except for the monster. But the good guys always wins, and the demon always loses. Isn't that right, Danzo? Yes, indeed, Hokage-sama, said Danzo. But a thought was in the back of his mind. Unless the demon offer you a better deal, Danzo said that smirk. The next day, as Naruto looked towards the scalpel in his hand, he could use his hand with chakra as a scalpel. You're gonna have to learn how to use a scalpel, Naruto kun. The woman, one of Kakashi's ex teammates, pointed out to the boy. You never know when you will be without chakra. Naruto raised an eyebrow on him without chakra. It would be like claiming that the ocean could dry up. Rin Sensei, I've got a lot of chakra, even surpassing Kaki's. So, me without chakra. That saying, he couldn't get to finish a sentence as he placed a chakra suppression seal on him. There, she said. No, you're... She watched as a paper burned. And Naruto got free. I got stronger seals on me, said Naruto. Seal paper won't work at all, he said. Well, I don't care, she said. No chakra scalpel. You'll have to learn how to use this one. They were in the hospital basement, working on corpse. That was used by newly trained men in names. As Ren watched him as he worked. Stitching up the body, fixing the artery. Hmm. He worked fast, and not to mention he soaking information like he was a sponge. The door opened up as Sakura walked down instantly. She got a bit more courage and she saw Naruto working on a corpse as that made her turn green. Well, come over here, miss, said Rin. My apprentice said that you want to learn. Since he's already been schooled on the basics, and while he handled the corpse, I'll let you work on Mr. Gassi. As Naruto groaned at that, Sakura was confused. Mr. Gassi? It's shock therapy, said Naruto. It's a really disgusting corpse that get filled 
with all sorts of organic waste. Then, with a bit of chakra, it goes all the way. Puke, gas, everything. Really, it's better to cut a corpse open than deal with. Mr. Gassy said Naruto. Yeah, look at him, said Renya. She looked towards Naruto. Now, he's handling a corpse like ease. But when he first saw Mr. Gassy, he paled and wanted to puke. As Sakura took a breath. Well, Naruto went through it, right? How bad could a corpse be? Five minutes later, Sakura was puking. Once again, as Naruto placed on a medical mask. As Sakura had puked three times. That's Mr. Gassy for you. Until you can avoid puking, we will rinse. And continue, day after day. In the meantime, I'll give you the basic medicine books to read from, said Rin. As Nur took off his gloves, Rin Sensei I could take her towards the library if you want. As Rin nodded as Nur took Sakura. So, giving up, he asked as he started to walk the stairs with her. She clenched her fists. No, she said as she followed Naruto. Listen, whatever you're doing right now, do it for yourself, okay? Not for me. Sakura came to a stop. As Naruto turned towards her, I... She couldn't get to finish because she didn't show what he meant or how would he know such a thing. Was he able to read minds or something? I know, you are afraid, you are alone. And I came to save you. Knight in shrine and armor, said Naruto. But I'm not someone that you can or should depend on, he said. So if you're doing this because of me, stop now. Do this for yourself to become better. As he started to walk, she moved slowly. Why would you think that she acts? You're not walking beside me but slightly behind me, said Naruto. You're following me that much. Give away your inner thoughts, said Naruto. It's something of a body language lesson I read somewhere, said Naruto, with a small chuckle. Well, um, it's just that you look so... What do I say, she thought to herself. Charming, good looking, calming. Is calming even an adjective? Much like an adult, she said. I find myself looking at you as a sensei. Not one of us, she said. That may be true, but appearances deceive, chakra chan There's a reason I'm more mentally mature, he said, as he opened the door to the library. Sakura eyes went wide when she saw one hundreds of Naruto as they were all hold not different books doing different subjects as her mouth was wide open as Naruto closed it with his left hand Shadow Clone required Chakra to split when they are finished and they dispel all that information that they have studied it returned back to me said Naruto effectively I mentally age a lot faster because of them and I physically age because he trailed off never mind that Let's get your books checked out. Sakura heard that Jonin class ninjas could only create six, yet Naruto create hundreds. And yet he'll completely fine. Um, can I ask what's your maximum limit, said Naruto. Once again he looked like he was reading our mind. As he simply smiled. It's 3,900. If I still want to remain, come back ready. Whoa, said Sakura. You're like a one-man army. Precisely. Here we are. Veins and stabs. Burns and treatment. Sakura winks at that as she touched her side where her burn mark was as he handed the books to Sakura. As the library had a policy, you could only take out two books at a time. So Sakura was confused when he was taking up more than usual. When they arrived to check them out, the librarian looked towards Naruto and didn't say anything. It almost seems like she was afraid. Well, said Naruto, better go back before Rin Sensei think that we gone and elope, said Naruto. As she blushed at that, on the rooftop, someone wasn't really... Happy about those words. So, that pink hair whore thinks that she can elope with my son. Cushion a stare with hatred at the girl. No one ran away with her son. No one was gonna do that. She didn't notice that blue hair. Some girl that was following Naruto from a distance. She was after her son as well. Another bitch. What the hell did everyone want with her son? Cushion san Nice day, isn't it? Said Kakashi as he was standing there. She narrowed her eyes. He too wanted her son. He was trying to win him over with his signature techniques. But he was gonna fail. Everyone was gonna fail. Yes, Kakashikan, she said. Why are you here, she asked. I was asked to bring you towards Minato Sensei's office. As Kushina neared her gaze down towards the alley, where Naruto and Sakura were walking. As Kakashi felt it, that gaze of murder and intent. We should get going, said Kakashi. Oh yes, you're right. I'll go talk with my husband, she said. As she moved, but her gaze was still, looking back every now and then. Kakashi knew that he had to do something before. It turned out sour. He needed to speak with Sakura, maybe. Naruto didn't seem like he was interested in the girl. He was just helping her out. But Sakura seemed to be falling for the blonde. Kakashi just hoped everything was going to be fine. Even with the Hokage forcing him to train Sasuke. Because he awakened his Sharingan. As Kakashi's scowl, Minato told him that he should not read that book. He should focus on training Sasuke. 
he rather have nerfed at his student but no, he had to trim the damn Uchiha, that scowling brat. As he sighs, he made his way off. With Yujito, her team had failed that much. Was to be expected. She done what she could but even then she knew they had little to no chance of winning this as they were on the road to go back to Kumo. She felt remorse. She was angry when she was in Taki. She did something. She saw those two ninjas moving towards the girl. They looked like mercenaries like they were going to kill her. So she yelled out and told them that that girl was Hokage's daughter. She was just so angry she wanted them to pay for taking Ruta away. And those two had kidnapped that girl. They quickly knocked her out and took her away. She wanted to have some revenge. They had stolen her brother. So she wants someone else to steal their daughter. She had yelled it from the bushes. No way she could be recognized. But the only words that she heard from Naruto, the only words that shakered her for her core when she saw him with that smile. I'm home, mom. That woman who had kidnapped him and probably brainwashed him, stolen him away. And he was now calling her mother. She felt even disgusted thinking about it. How could it happen? Why did it happen? As she heard what Moguro said, they were knocked out. And they woke up at one of the gates. Without their scroll, they tried to go back in the forest, but there were snakes, so much of them blocking their path, they were forced to give up. As they believed that Naruto was the one who did that, as Yujito's ears twitch, as she heard bushes being moved over to the side of the road, as she watched the snake came out, it had a letter in its mouth. Yujito Sensei, Shinkansen said, as Yujito took the letter and opened it. My name is Kuro. I'm sure that you will certainly recall the black snake, the awesome biter of the apocalypse, the streamer of night. I must apologize. I am deeply sorry I could not protect Naruto from the chains that the Hokage plays on him and there is nothing that you can do to prevent. I will explain, but I beg your understanding. You cannot speak of this to anyone, not even the right Aggie. I am writing this to you hoping that you comprehend and burn the letter swiftly after. Naruto may not engage in conversations or speak to any Kumo ninja without a Hokage being present there. Because if you do, the seal on his neck will activate, sending him into a Genjutsu, mindless state where he would walk towards Kumo and release the Kayubi inside the city. Furthermore, he's also subjected to seals and bindings that can cut his chakra in a moment notice. He's staying within Konoha and acting this way to protect you and everyone that he values at Kumo. But still, I should apologize. I should have acted sooner than later and saved the boy who saved me in return. But I can promise you this. He will not stay in Kanoha forever. He will be free. Trust in him as he trusts in you. P.S. I have your right list because I'm too big right now to use the inkbrush. P.P.S. This is the fifth letter that pops. Make me right. If you don't like my grammar, too bad. It's me, Yoru. As Yujito, I scheme over the letter once again before it burn in her palm. The ground cracked, forcing her jeans to step back as a blue flame shimmer over her body. S -s Sensei? She took several deep breaths as she looked towards her jeans. She had to bring them back home before she came back. Then she would march back and claim her brother with force. She would burn it to the ground. She would get him back. That was what she was gonna do. She couldn't let him stay there and suffer. No, she could not. One month to bring you lot to Kumo and then I'm off alone. Time skip. Hokage's office. As Kakashi left. As Kushina and Minato were in the room. Kushina, I need to check the seal. She nodded. As he activated the privacy seal and removed the bandage on her right hand. He stirred the hand of his wife. The hand that had become claw with dark red fur over it. And it had not receded. It's worse than before, Minato. It's gonna reach the elbow soon, she said. As she did not know what to do. I will apply more seals, don't worry. It's all gonna be fine soon, he said. The more seal he placed on her, the more anger she felt vanish away. As he placed by the bandage, I saw Nurutokan going with Sakura to the library, then back to the hospital to be trained from Rinzen. You know, they would make a good couple. You know, they remind me of us when we were younger. Yes, I suppose they would, said Minato. Sadly, he knew in a couple of days she would return back to want to murder anyone that go near Naruto. It had taken time to realize what happened. The ink chakra engine that dropped when he had battled off against a Kayube and that he had picked up to store it in his wife to make sure that she would go through the process. They were mixing with her young chakra and unless something was done, 
she would change for the worse and to the point of no return that is why he had to act fast in one month time Donzo operative was going to be ready he was going to spar and get close with Naruto and Naruto. after the tournament Naruto was going to be tired at least he hoped after non-stop fighting no one will know that he disappeared after the tournament and he will be captured in one month time he would have Yamato and himself prepare a seal on a newborn baby a certain baby born from Uji Uzuki on the class wife of Hayate and then the Kayube would swap places using Yamato Mokiton Kushina hadn't died because of her Uzumaki by Delta and a union release but Naruto would die if not because of the Kayube removal it was because they were going to plant a sword through his body to make sure that he stayed dead no one would ever learn of this everyone would be happy the Anvu operative that was going to take Naruto place was going to choose Kanoha and he would stay here with Kushina everything will be fine everything will work out good he thought to himself he was a good guy in this good guys always win time skip Danzo couldn't help but grin realizing the demon's deal had required some more insensitive from his side as a nice little bird a bird that had scales and hiss inform him about the seals on Naruto seeing that Naruto could not talk about them as Danzo saw them it was a 16 point seal yes they could be removed in the first week of retraining he saw them as Naruto went back to his alias as monster once the seals were off everything came easily he had given the boy his trust showing the boy that he would deliver on his promise and now Danzo could not wait for that day to come that day when he would be named the fifth Okage of Kanoha but Donzo knew that the boy worked on his deals pretty hard he gave his word and he will fulfill them they had a deal and Donzo no matter the paranoia prefer a willing Kumo ally than a force Kanoha weapon strong weapons were hard to control but weapons as strong as a boy impossible so if Kanoha was gonna go strong it needed the boy this boy not a substitute a fake that he would place in Kushina's grasp or a baby that would take so long to grow and master the powers of the Kyube. no he needed this boy there was only one thing that he needed to do and that was to bring the boy completely on his side a willing weapon was better than an unwilling one and Minato was an arrogant stupid fool that was clear he should have kidnapped the boy fake ignorance and be done with it instead he brought the boy to the academy out in the open showing that the boy was within Kanoha Minato was stupid he really thought that it would take a couple of days for him to find a boy that was exactly like Naruto he had prepared for this from the beginning from that talk he had with Naruto the facial operations everything had been prepared down to the T but there was Yamato watching every single move the two fighters came to a stop as one of them had a ninjato in front of the other's juggler a single move and he would be dead you were supposed to fight with katanas only Donzo said staring at two wolf mass and bird mass why did you use a ninjato to follow the rules of engagements means weak life and death is rootless the boy said bird mass did not move his gaze but he did tense a bit well done monster bird go and relearn all books and warfare immediately yes Donzo sama said bird as bird left without a single word as monster descended towards Donzo's side I feel sorrow for what I did in the past but at the present I feel I need to correct my past mistakes said Donzo as the Anvu stepped forward and kneeled with a box in his hand a long black box which Donzo opened and showed there was a katana inside with a silver trimming your skills are excellent once more you surpass my expectations in less than a month so this and what it entails is a gift for you as Naruto nodded as he received the katana the katana handle was hollow as something was inside and Naruto knew what it was as Naruto left a slip of paper on his route mask and gave it back to Donzo when he had something to tell the man about after all Yamato was there watching I thank you Donzo Sama said Naruto as he bowed his head as he holstered the katana on his back under the tree stand the hidden shield of the leaf said Donzo to rise to the sky when the enemy advanced said Naruto as he removed his mask because we are root as Yamato watched with his monkey mask over to the side the boy was getting back into the root habits that he had tried to break all those years ago in two days for the tournament the boy would be emotionless I will take him from here said Yamato as he moved from the wall as a black snake quickly slipped into the darkness time skip so Yamato sensei 
Is my student doing alright with his extensive training regime with you? Asked Kushina as she took her own ramen bowls from Tukihan. As Ayom looked at Ruto, who took his own as well. He is Namikaze san, said Yamato as he took his own bowl and started to eat. He's got a lot of potential, and I will make sure to unleash it all, said Yamato. Please unleash me, said Akayube. You know, I was waiting for this moment to release you, said Naruto. Wait, really? No, just messing with you. As the fox growled, as Kushina smiled, well, naruto -kan, the Hokage has high hopes for you. I am sure that you will not betray his trust, she said. Of course, Kushina sensei. I'll make the Hokage proud. That's how much I love Kanoha. As Yamato finished his bowl, he was going to report to the Hokage that Naruto emotions have been removed with success. He would probably even obey to let the Kayu be removed from him and take away his life for Konoha. Are you leaving Yamato, Sensei, said Naruto. I am afraid I have to. You put me through hell in training, said Yamato. Although he didn't even lift a finger. Tomorrow, same hour, he said. As Naruto and Kushina went through nine bowls of ramen before calling dinner to an end. As Naruto smirked as they were heading back, one of his clones dispersed. The blue hair girl was following him. Given that he knew who she was, it was going to be perfect. He was going to use her for what he was going to do. He only had to deal with his mother, who was currently walking behind him. As she was behind him, not in front, not beside, she was behind him. Naruto-kun, is there anyone that you like in particular, she asked. He mumbled something. I didn't hear you, Naruto-kun, she said. No one, why? As Kushina simply giga as Naruto eyes narrowed to the side, where the blue hair girl was, hiding, listening. You got yourself a stalker, it seems, said Kushina as she moved beside him. Seems like you're a heart stealer. As Naruto narrowed his eyes towards her, she seemed normal still. Well, you're not the first person to tell me this, said Naruto. Something was different. He looked towards her hand, the bandage. There were more seals on it. A lot more. Kushina sensei, why do you have all those seals on your right hand, Naruto asked. She increased her pace slightly. The body language showed that she didn't want to speak about it. As Naruto said nothing as he followed her, she came to a stop. Naruto kun. Your mother's a really horrible person, you know? Wait, that was strange. Why? He asked. As she started to cry, because I was weak. When I gave birth, he came and took the Kayube out of me. I was the Jinjuliki of the Kayube. Before you, Naruto, she said. And that burden fell on you when the third sealed him inside of you. He who, Naruto asked. A masked man, she said. He had the Sharingan and he managed to pull the Kayube out of me with a weakened seal. But once a Bijou and a host are separated, the host dies, said Naruto. She shook her head. The Uzumaki is renowned for their vitality, chakra, and well, chakra chains. I had the seal of Sinali on me as well, so I survived the extraction, she whispered. It was painful, but she remembered holding her daughter. But she never got to hold Naruto when he was young, and now he was a man. But she had to protect him, yes, she had to protect him. Her thoughts started to drift from everyone, and that girl that was stalking him. How could she think that was cute? She was stalking him. She wanted to take him away. She couldn't allow that. Do you think I could have one as well, said Naruto. As he wondered, why was this the first time the woman was telling this? You know, yes. I'll have to speak to Sinali, said Kushina. So you can always be protected as she hugged him. Yes, so you'll always be fine. Yes, he's mine. No one, not even death will claim him from me, she said to herself. As Naruto noticed the seals on her right arm start to glow. Thank you, mom, he said. As they went inside the house, as he went to get a bath, he finished rather quickly. As he then went to bed, he needed to get some sleep now because if he knew that he was there watching him, his mind would refuse to sleep. As he had to get some sleep. The next morning he woke up, she was there. He knew what he had to do. Morning, mom, he says, he gave her a quick kiss on the cheek. Morning, Rutakan, she said. As she went to prepare breakfast, he just had to endure it because he knew. Orochimaru was going to invade Kanoha. Everything was going to be set off there. He got the information from those sound ninjas that he tortured. So he just had to endure this for now. Because everything was going to change very soon. So he just had to hold on and endure it. He just had to endure it. But guys, if you end up so right here, if you want to make person, do like, subscribe, comment down below. Turn on that bell notification to stay posted. But I'm off now. See you guys soon. Peace.